Hello, guys, and thank you for joining us for another episode of No More Kids in Scientology. And in this episode, we're going to continue reacting to the interview that John Atak and Mike Rinder had, where they attempted to sanitize and whitewash what Mike Rinder has been confronted with. So, the Scientology story is complex. There is so many degrees of abuse that take place inside of those hotels and commercial buildings. But there was a very, very special place in hell that was done and reserved for those of us who were abused as children, essayed as children inside of those hotels. And as much as people pretend to understand the plight of what we've been through, especially the two men that are going to be seen here discussing so nonchalantly what they're discussing. Well, we simply have to juxtapose that to our experience because once again, Miriam and I represent the literal view of us that have been able to live to tell. And one of the biggest burdens that we have as survivors of this disgusting hotel is the burden of understanding that the living nightmare perpetrated on us the cover-ups that took place to gaslight us, to make us think and believe that not only did we deserve having been essayed, that we literally pulled it in. That it was our fault that we were being essayed. Imagine running a worldwide hotel scheme where you have underage kids and adults that have unfeathered access to so-called kids, so-called adults in small bodies that we were called. And then what? You get blamed for your SA. So we really need to literally make that point because many people don't seem to be able to get it. Many of the adults, many of the parents, many of the Scientology parents are out there still pretending this is a very specific circumstance that, you know, only happened to Miriam. Well, it also happened to me and it also happened to Lorianne and it also happened to Iride. And it also happened to Emanuela. And it also happened to Annalisa. And it also happened to Diana. And I can go on and on and on and on. Molly Sims. All of these are names of underage kids that were told that their essay was something that they participated in. That they had something to do with it. And you know what? Turns out we didn't participate in it. Turns out we had nothing to do with it. Turns out that we were left there to literally fend for ourselves. And the miracle of today is that we are still here standing how many decades later has it taken us to be able to find a voice and to be able to enunciate and connect the dots that have been buried underneath the pile of excrement 
being discussed publicly as if Mike Rinder, as if John Atak, as if all these whistleblowers that have not made the plight of children their first priority. Well, you know what? Maybe it has everything to do with the fact that they joined this hotel cult as grown adults. We did not join this hotel cult as grown adults. And as much as I have spent all this time trying to blur all the lines, oh, we really have to save everyone. Everyone's under the same situation ship. Well, you know what? Stop showing us your privilege. If you are a cis white man that didn't get essayed in those hotels, our burden seems to be something that you were not burdened with. And instead of doing everything in your power to help those who were burdened, all we ever get is grandstanding all we ever get is showcasing of their privilege of the fact that they weren't targeted because they weren't easy prey well guess what miriam and i were easy prey and today we are standing up because we are very highly aware of other kids in our exact same circumstance who stand to be easy prey. And while everyone can intellectualize ad nauseum, what in the hell Alwan Hubbard's legacy is, we couldn't give a shred of a literal F. Because you know what? What we experience at an industrial size scale is something we know is happening to other kids. So let's really take a look at this next section and really react to what else is being whitewashed in the center. And she's pointing the finger very much at you. I would like to say that by my estimation, there are between three and 4,000 people who are being held as slaves today in the Scientology organization under the name of the Sea Organization. They right. are slaves. They, you they understand are. that better than anybody understands it because of the time that, that you spent being a slave. As a consenting adult, as the person that went to the IRS, as a person that went and hired attorneys to turn this into a nonprofit so that, yes, people could be enslaved. So, yes, Mike Rinder, you understand very much firsthand this situation because you consented to be a slave. Children could not make those type of concessions. Children could not make those type of decisions in their lives. Of Ron Hubbard and later of, of David Miscavige. A slave of L. Ron Hubbard, a slave of David Miscavige, who agreed to be their slave. And what happened when you stop agreeing to be their slave? You did walk out of the hotel, didn't you? We must not forget that. And bearing in mind Benjamin Franklin's, um, to, to paraphrase what he said, we either hang together or we hang separately. I mean, again, John Atak, you and your quotes of Benjamin Franklin talking about how we either hang together or hang separately. Children did not make the choice to be put in harm's way. So why are the children expected to hang with the rest of the adults? By all means, make that line that you just said make sense. 
Are you still going with the pitch of L. Ron Hubbard that children are just adults in small bodies? Are you saying that children, if all adults wanted to get hung, if all adults wanted to drink a toxic Kool-Aid, if all adults were of full mental faculty and capacity to put themselves in that position, are you saying that the children should just suffer the same fate? And there is, you know, a huge organization with billions of dollars that would like to see an end to us all so that it can triumphantly clear the planet of all common sense and goodness. Um, so with all common sense and goodness was eradicated when you were role playing Warren Hubbard's sadistic, disgusting agenda. So just to make that clear for you, in case you weren't aware that you were once upon a time, once upon a time as a consenting grown adult, somebody that was literally going with that pitch. That in mind, I, I would like to ask some direct and simple questions, um, which I, I made a little note of, um, right. which I have here somewhere. <laughs> uh, there it is. It's that little one there. Now, uh, you're on the board of, of Child USA. Yes. You know? How long have you been on the board there? About mm, three years or. Of... All right, you guys. Child USA, the think tank for child protection. Imagine being Child USA the so-called think tank of child protection and tapping Mike Rinder to really add to said think tank. Imagine the idiocy, imagine the stupidity of people that didn't do a shred of due diligence to find out who this man is, even though they were told, even though they were intimately told you guys, the woman who runs Child USA, the think tank for child protection, Marcy Hamilton, or what? No, Marcy. Yeah, Marcy Hamilton. She was told. She has insight into the inner workings of how this child ridden abuse scheme worked and yet this is still the man she went to tap to add to her think tank maybe four now okay who mike winder just said he's been on the board of that think tank for four years so Mike Rinder was on the board of the nonprofit organization, literally was a mastermind of how to make this a nonprofit organization after L. Ron Hubbard was already dead, defunct, and six feet under. And Mike Rinder spent countless years resurrecting that man's legacy so that it would become a legal entity so that he could grab and nab Miriam and her underage kids so that he could have slave labor, a so-called painter, a so-called fine artist and Miriam's mom to go do a project that Mike Grinder propped up the so-called Elron Hubbard Museum so they could safe point a convicted felon because I'm sure that if we have a museum on a major street of Los Angeles pitching L. Ron Hubbard convicted indicted felon that he was and is, then everyone's going to forget who he is. Then everyone's going to buy the fake pitch that this man who sits right here, who was his pro bono publicist for decades. It's all just going to get washed up. Isn't that great, you guys? So you can just wash up the literal 
disgusting history of a convicted felon. That's all it took. What's the objective of Child USA? Um, to help the victims of particularly child sexual abuse, but any child abuse, um, and then also extending over into sexual abuse beyond just children. But originally, the 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 mandate of Child USA was to assist victims of child sexual abuse to get justice. Mm -hmm. And the primary thing that uh, that we have focused on is changing the statute of limitations laws state by state in the United States, because the biggest barrier to child sexual abuse and the victims of child sexual abuse getting justice is the fact that many, many times it takes many, many years before a, some of the victims even realize that they were victims, and B, before they are able to even speak about it, and C, let alone go to an, any authorities and file complaints. Mm -hmm. And by the time that span has run, the statute of limitations has expired, and there is nothing that anybody can do about it. And in um, now, I believe it's 20, may, that may be an inaccurate number, but it, it's a significant number of states, we have managed to get the law changed. Mm. And that has been done through lobbying efforts, through writing expertises, through uh, engaging with political figures, whatever it takes that is what has been done and it has been exceedingly successful we are now moving to change these sort of laws around the world mm -hmm. so that it's no longer just the united states but it's all over the world and it is one of the things that i frankly am most proud about that i have been engaged in mm -hmm. in my life isn't that great, Mike Rinder, that you're so proud? And notice, you guys, that he does use the royal we. So you, Mike Rinder, are changing the status of limitations single-handedly. Isn't that great, Mike Rinder, that you were working on the board of this nonprofit that should have landed you with the full awareness of the type of abilities that Miriam Francis could have had for herself, given that, what was it? Oh yeah, California. Wasn't California a literal state that had a three-year window opened up for victims of child sexual abuse to be able to file lawsuits irregardless of their statutes of limitation mike rinder and weren't you already fully aware given that you you producer of the aftermath show used literally miriam found out because you've always purported, oh, I had no idea what happened to you. Oh, I had no clue. Imagine you did have a clue now. Imagine we have you on videotape interviewing Miriam. And then imagine that um, you did get those laws extended so that the statutes of limitations wouldn't apply. Well, imagine that as of today, Miriam never filed a civil lawsuit with that window, did she? Did you ever bother as a board member of the most proud thing that you are in your whole life to tell her? Oh, Miriam, guess what? Good news. I know you're literally trying to get a criminal investigation going for yourself. But thanks to me and all the amazing work that I've done, 
guess what? You now have the opportunity to file a civil lawsuit. Imagine they've already shut her criminal investigation down because they claimed at the DA's office that her statutes of limitation had, oops, run out. Imagine that the three-year window that you were fully aware of as a board member of Child USA, the think tank to really help children that have been essayed to really get a shred of justice. Imagine you are nowhere on the record advocating for any of that. Reconcile that, Mike Winder. Reconcile that quickly. Because are you an advocate? Are you a board member of a nonprofit that is really all about helping victims of child SA and the receipts don't match is what it's called, Mike Winder. Even though you say you're so proud of this work, so then why weren't you proudly calling Miriam to make sure she at least got some civil action going while she waited for her criminal investigation, you know, to get tanked? I mean, in addition to doxing her, in addition to all the other disgusting, depraved things you have already done for yourself. So by all means, you guys, go and call up Child USA and ask. Ask y'all's questions. Ask them. Because I know I have the question, why did Miriam never get a civil action going? Why did no one else in the state of California that was essayed has a shred of justice for themselves? We have one lawsuit filed in the literal 11th hour. But how many more victims are there? Mike Winder, and why have you done nothing? That would be great to literally know right about now. So let's have you make that literal point by yourself. Let's see you shoot yourself in the foot to borrow one of your favorite phrases. Um, it actually started from the aftermath show yeah. because I was looking for an expert uh, to come on the program to talk about the issue of the separation of church and state and particularly the First Amendment and the law in the United States. And I got referred to a professor at Penn University, uh, Marcy Hamilton, who has written several books on the subject. And I reached out to her and had many discussions with her. And she eventually came and agreed to appear on the aftermath. And we talked about the First Amendment. And in doing so, she started talking to Leah and me about Child USA, which is something I'd never heard of. And then she said that because of the work that we had done, she wanted to present us with an award at the annual gala for having exposed the child sexual abuse and abuse in general ongoing in Scientology. Imagine that, that you are showing up when you get told that you're going to go get an award. Imagine that this woman, Marcy Hamilton, who I did, once upon a time, hire us a lawyer who I did once upon a time shared highly confidential, intimate details of my essay that took place in the hotel where you were a high ranking executive of. Imagine you're being given an award at a gala. 
I mean, again, you guys, like, what do you think was happening in Scientology hotels? Why is it that all these nonprofits are all just about handing out awards without doing a shred of due diligence? Because it'd be great for Marcy Hamilton to really start answering that question right about now, Marcy Hamilton. Since you do run this, since you are a lawyer, since you were privy to very, very, very confidential, intimate, highly detailed conversations, and you still went, you know who I really need to give an award to? You know who I really need on my board? This man I really need on my board because this man has a amazing track record of really wanting to help children that have been essayed. Imagine that track record includes, but is not limited to doxing Miriam with his, her full entire police investigation doxed by this man sitting here playing dumb because that's again the only mode he has he does his horrendous disgusting things and then he plays dumb and then he plays oh i'm really gonna sound smart right about now we went and went to the gala and accepted the award and then marcy asked if uh we would like to be on the board uh, Leah had too many other commitments. I said, of course, and Bob's your uncle. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go, guys. It's as easy as one, two, three to get on a think tank board with lawyers intimately connected, intimately connected, intimately aware of what in the hell was being done inside of those hotels. But again, I guess lawyers need to go and get some classes by L. Ron Hubbard on how to pull strings. I guess all lawyers in America need to come and get classes by children that were expected to investigate and pull strings. Because when we were investigating as children, our heads were put on a pike if we missed. Imagine all of these so-called professors, law professors, really going to do save another world, do not have apparently the critical thinking skills to see through this bozo, the evil clown that sits there with a smile as he docks the victim, as he didn't tell Miriam that she should be filing a lawsuit. So what in the literal hell are you actually doing, Mike Rinder? By all means, advice. Thank you guys all for watching, and I will see you all extremely soon. Bye-bye.